pinstriping decals in place that gave all the base coated parts a clear coat. I also cleaned up all the nuts and bolts to mount the engine in the frame and the forks. So I could get on with some assembly. It's nice to see things come together, it gives you a bit of motivation. The frame was placed over the engine which was balanced on a couple of bits of wood because I still haven't got the exhaust back from the cleaners. A simple case of lining up the bolt holes and pushing in the bolts. I used a slightly tapered pin just to wiggle everything into shape before tapping the bolt home. I forgot to remove the masking tape that protected the bearing cups and it's gone hard which made it very hard to get the stuff off ended up using a razor blade. Next the stem. The lower race was greased, the ball bearings were fitted and it was inserted into the frame. I then used masking tape to hold the stem in place while I loaded up the top bearing with grease and as you can see fitted the ball bearings. Can be awkward. With the balls in place, the stem was held at the bottom and the tape removed. Trying not to disturb the ball bearings of course. And the top race was then screwed into position. course it had to happen and knock some of the balls out of the race so had to replace them. The forks use a pivoting system at the bottom of the stem and have a leaf spring for the suspension. Sandwiched between the forks and the stem are two fibre discs. These act as a crude damping system.
the bolt is pinched up with just enough force for the discs to have a bit of friction to act as the damper. And they're locked off with a lock nut. Next is the suspension leaf spring. This connects to the lower fork pivot and is held in place by the light bracket on the top of the neck. For the moment I'm using the old one, but as soon as a good one comes along I shall replace it. Always amazes me with the ingenuity these little bikes were made with. The rear rack is mounted. This is used to mount the rear mudguard, so I'll put it on now as a reference for where the mudguard mounts are. <coughs> Originally, this was twisted all over the place. I got it as straight as I could, but now I have to fettle it to make it fit. I also bung on the saddle and the handlebars just so I can have a look at the bike and see how the lines are coming together. I'll also bung the tank on just to make sure everything fits. It's a bit like a dry build this this video but I'm sure a lot of it will have to become off definitely the tank I'll have to polish it out later when the clear coat is nice and hard it's also the opportunity to see what's missing and see what style of parts that are best placed on the bike the petrol cap. At the moment I'm thinking a nice brass, polished brass cap would look rather well with the gold pinstripe. But more likely it'll be polished aluminium in keeping with the age of the bike.
just enough time to fit the bottom bracket here I'm cleaning out the threads with a wire brush in the electric drill this job can be as fiddly at the best of times so get everything nice and free hopefully it will help get the job moving along smoothly again wire brush the original fittings get them as clean as possible they were never plated in the first place so a nice metal finish is all that's required just leaves the spindle to be greased up and new ball bearings to be fitted Carefully place the axle in place, trying not to lose the balls into the bottom of the bottom bracket. The other cup is screwed into place, again being careful not to lose the ball bearings and any end float is taken up. With the axle rotating freely and no end float, the lock ring is tightened up. And just for looks, I'll bung the pedal cranks on. Thanks for watching.